Hello and welcome to Deliberately Creative. I am so happy that you guys stuck with me as I was having a little bit of trouble with my audio system. Let's hope it sticks around for us better now. Turn that down just a little bit. Might be blowing your ears out. <laughs> I am really excited to be doing this video. You can hear me typing. Yeah, you guys are hearing me all together now. <laughs> there we are. So, <sighs> thank you so much for hanging out, guys, and making sure that I knew there was no sound before I went through the whole video and then figured it out. I've already done that. I made a video. I had to do the whole voiceover for it of this fun wood duck. This little wood duck is going up on Monday with the full drawing video first and then the painting video. And this video is going up tomorrow. This is a hummingbird moth. So I hope that you will check out those videos. The They are both going to be premieres. So we'll have the live chat going on and have some fun. I am really Really looking forward to getting started on this, though. Fun little froggy. Ah, thank you, guys. Hit that like button. Yes, please share this video with your friends now that it's working. I appreciate you. I am so grateful that all of you have joined me today while we're all staying home and staying safe. And you're going to hashtag paint with me. I've already pre-drawn this little frog onto a piece of 140 pound watercolor paper. He is just taped down onto a piece of plastic. See, this is corrugated plastic board. You can get it at the craft store in the area where they sell sign uh, poster board. And I just used washi tape to tape it down. You could use painter's tape or regular masking tape, whatever. It's just washi tape has a lighter adhesion to their, um, to the stickiness. And I need to move this so I can get my chat up. <laughs> I have the reference up in front of me a little bit bigger so I can see it. The reference is from Unsplash and the artist, the photographer, um, uh, Zednek Machatik. Machatik. I'm not sure how to say that. It's definitely in another language with many accent marks over it. But he is, or she, I don't know, they are on Unsplash and sharing all kinds of pretty pictures that we can use for free in our artwork. I am going to get started here. Looking at this guy, he has a dark green and orange background. And I have mentioned before that I really, I really enjoy the green and orange backgrounds. Hello, Cassandra and Carol and Peggy and Leanne, uh, Len, Lenny and Karen. Yes. All right. And I know Debbie was in here and Gina. Thank you guys so much for being here. All right. I'm still trying to get my windows all organized here. Come on. There we go. Now I can get this. <laughs> All right. You know, something I hate about windows sometimes is that if you put a window too close to the top edge, it will automatically expand. I'm not so much for that. But we're going to go and have our calm and easy, easy going time here. I'm going to wet the background, not the frog or the flower. And I do have, I'm so glad. People really do like frogs. I like frogs too. I think they're really pretty. This guy has the cutest big red eyes and he does have interesting coloration on him. There's some stuff that fell on my, let's see. Maybe I'll move the water. Let's see where you guys can see it. I do have two, two jars of water. Let's move him. Boom. Up there. 
see if we can get this to work so you guys can see the palette too. It is kind of behind my head. <laughs> All right. So I'm just using, this is a Princeton Stroke Snap Brush. It is a watercolor brush and it's nice and flat. So I can cover a lot of this background. I'm going to try and keep it looser. Well, I guess right now it doesn't really matter which cup I dip my brush into. I have two water cups so that way I can keep my, my brush actually clean. When I need clean water, I will dip into the little jar. And, ooh, I just realized. Let's see if I can lift a little bit of him out without getting it into the water. Sometimes you forget things. Oh, well. Oh. Oh, I know what it is. My sleeves are dark and the auto exposure seems to be doing weird things. So I am going to try and keep my head out of the view and keep my arm out of the view. And right now I'm wetting all of the background around the outside of the frog. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying healthy, painting with me. This is going to be calm and at after I start getting some paint going on here, I am going to turn on some soft background music just because I want to hear a little bit of music too. There we go. Just getting that background nice and wet up to the flower. I think it's there. Well, if you can't find the Facebook group, what you do is go on to go, you can go on to facebook.com forward slash deliberately creative. And that's my page. And on the page, if you like the page, then you can also click on see group for this page. There we go. All right. So now we are going to get this background going in. It is dark. There's a lot of brown and green. So I'm going to actually make up in this little cup right here. I'll move it around. Oh, I need to wet down my paints from yesterday. I'm just using a small sprayer. This is just like a lens cleaner sprayer. Oh my gosh, hundreds of polywogs? That could be kind of scary. <laughs> Fun, but scary to have all those frogs in there. I just got my paint nice and wet. I'm going to mix up some dark brown. And that is with the orange. Boop. And the violet. And I just dropped some bits of my orange in there. Let's go put those bits back. This paint does um, flake and sort of shatter off if you... Ooh, let's make that bigger. Okay, we're not going to be seeing the, the, the palette if I make him bigger. But I want him bigger so we can really see it. Look at that. I just set it down. We're going to get some of this dark color going. Isn't that pretty? And it actually is coming down in here. We'll be making it darker. Right now I'm using this gouache a lot like a watercolor. It's very thin. Just so that we can get a base color on. And then we will get it thicker as we go along. How many days have I used the paints? Uh, the paints that are on this palette, I'm on day two or three. I think three. But how many days have I actually used gouache? Uh, probably about two weeks, three weeks at this moment while I'm recording this. See, look at that. 
Doesn't that orange and purple, that orange and violet, just makes the most beautiful brown? So fun. And by having the paper wet, it just lets the, the paint move around a little bit more. And see, I can go in with a wet brush and if I'm not careful, I'll end up painting right over the frog, but that's okay. I can paint a little bit over him. The colors are opaque and so they will color over each other. I'm kind of going to look at this and say, hmm, maybe I want a little bit more of some shadow in here, up here at the top. I'm just taking the purple now, just to get some texture in that background. I'm going to try and not, yes, gouache is so economical. I'm going to try and not be too fussy with this background. If you let the brush dry out a little bit, it will start to split and splay. And that can actually be to your benefit if you're trying to get texture to show up, sort of like grasses or whatever. The difference between gouache and regular watercolor is that regular watercolor is always pretty much always transparent. Gouache can be painted over, so you can paint light colors over dark colors and they'll show up. With watercolor, you're always leaving the white as much as possible. Let's see, now I'm gonna grab a little bit of green. We'll rotate. I'm gonna grab some of this green with that little bit of orange that's on my brush. Light colors dry darker, dark colors dry lighter. Absolutely. Take a little bit of some of this crimson that's sitting there. Get myself kind of a green, almost olivey. Whoops, it's right behind me. Let's move that up here so you can see. This kind of olivey mud type color. Let's get some leaves kind of going into the background. It's a little bit lighter up on this side. When you layer your gouache over, so if I took the same color over the top of this, it would end up blending and becoming darker. Let's see if we can, I'm gonna have to rotate. So yes, you could do this painting with watercolor, especially with how I'm doing this right now. Absolutely can do this with watercolor. You can do this with acrylic also exactly the same way that I'm laying it in. So I'm getting the background in. You can kind of stroke through it and it will maintain some of those shapes. So we've got little froggy sitting in front of this kind of brown background. I'm just going to pull this up into the flower a little bit. Remember me saying that I'm going to try and not uh, be too precious with it? <laughs> That's... Yes, I do have a tutorial that answers questions on gouache. It is the video for newbies, and it also goes over and does a really fun painting of... It shows step-by-step -step how to do this sweet little pine warbler. So there we go. And maybe I don't want all of that to be quite so in the flower here. Look at that. I can go back and push that gouache back a little bit. These colors are staining in some respects. The um, but not enough to make a problem because they are opaque. 
There we go. All right. So one of the nice things that you can do with these is that you can go in and layer your colors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm taking some of the red, I'm going to put it over here to the side, and then I'm going to rinse my brush. So I want to get the flower being put in now. Grab some of the yellow. I'm just, this is just dry in the palette. I have wet, a wet brush. I'm going to take it over to that red, and I'm going to get kind of an orangey red. And I think I want to drop in a little bit more orange. Where did my orange go? Oh, there you are. <laughs> there you are. You just drop down. Since I've used up all my orange, I'm just going to drop some in right here. And see, this is, this is just a tiny little bit. And that will last in my palette until I use it all up, which is several paintings. All right. So now that red flower, I'm going to go ahead and get this layer of color in here. I'm not worried that I didn't get my pencil lines cleaned off. I'm not worried that I'm going to go right over the area where the yellow is going to be going. You know, you don't have to worry. You can just color it in. Look at that. Ooh, nice and vibrant. We'll be able to go over that ready orange color with the yellow and not have to worry about um, it covering. Now I am painting this in the direction of the, there's some little growth lines on here, the little wrinkles. Oh yeah, you don't have to color, cover these. I leave this palette out and open. Uh, the only reason why you would want to cover is maybe if you have pets. And you know what? I'm just going to go right over his cute little hands. I can still see my pencil lines. I want him to be actually on the flower. I want him to feel like he's part of that flower. No, not part of the flower, but you know, that he's over the top of the flower. Allie, are you still having trouble? Do you need me to turn up my volume some? I can turn up some. I've turned it up a little bit more. Let's see if that's, um, if you, if you're not able to hear it very well, you can go out and come back in and see if that helps. Yeah, if you guys could let me know if there is a, a sound problem. I want to get it fixed. My meter is showing me that there's sound though, so. Look at that. Excellent. Thank you. I'm so glad you can hear. Hey, Chrissy. Nice to see you. Yeah, I'm trying to get, get in here and get more live shows going more often. Now, this does have some darkness in there. I'm going to go ahead and just grab some of this muddy color that I've got and just mix it in to my orangey red and see what we do. See if we can get, ooh, look at that. We're getting that shadow color. Gouache is so forgiving that even if I made a huge mistake here, it would work out. You would be able to let it dry, paint over the top of it, blend it back. Maybe those shadows are going to be a little bit too strong right now, or maybe they're not going to be strong enough. We'll know as, as it dries. 
I do want to work some shadows down in where he's going to be sitting. So I think under his hands, I'm just going to make it dark and under his foot. Just like that. Yeah, he's a really fun reference, isn't he? I love that people put vi put pictures up for artists to be able to use. I've actually posted a few pictures on Unsplash and on Shutterstock. All right. So let's see. Ooh, I can go ahead and work some of that ready orange color, more orangey actually, into his eyes. So we can start getting that in there. The internet's been crazy today. Well, the internet is kind of crazy a lot right now. So I'm taking some of that orange and I'm going to drop it in here and I don't have to, oh, if you get water on the ferrule, you may end up with it dripping down. So you want to wipe any water off the ferrule. And I'm going to get that painted in. I think I need the paint a little bit thicker. So I'll just grab that thicken up the paint. All you have, all you have to do to thick, thicken up the paint is to mix it when it's straight from the tube. Or if you have uh, let it dry, get it wet and then, okay, I have to set this down. I cannot do that up in the air. That was silly. Uh, set it down, mix your paint straight from the tube and just remember that your colors are going to darken because this is a dark color. And this is much more red than I was going for. But I can just fill in the whole thing with the, with the red. I am bouncing around a little bit. You know, go and do his eyes, then go and do <laughs> the eyes. Yeah. clean up a little bit around the edge. Just make sure that it's filled in all the way. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect at this point because what is this? It's opaque and we can go right over those edges. Now his fingertips and everything are kind of orange yellow colored. His body is kind of green. So I think that what I want to do is dry this really quick and put yellow over the whole frog. So we're going to do that. So we'll just dry this flower off where he's sitting. I don't want it to end up being, you know, a problem. But there we go. Yeah, the colors do feel a little bit hot here, huh? Gotta have giggles. Absolutely. We need fun times. We need things to make us happy. Happiness helps to keep your, your heart healthy. All right, so I'm grabbing this yellow, and it looks like I didn't clean out all the orange. I'm not worried about it he can have a little bit of an orange color to it. Yeah, Shutterstock is really cool. I just joined up and I just started uploading some pictures. I've got a ton of flowers that I want to put up. Um, I'm going to turn him upside down and let's see. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get a little bit of white going too. And all I'm doing is taking a paper towel and wiping off that weird dark color so I don't have to worry about it. 
Hey, Mary. Nice to see you. So I'm just grabbing some white with this yellow to get a more opaque coloring. And I want to go ahead and start filling in his fingers and his whole body. I will take a brush that has a little bit less of a thickness to it. But right now, I just want to get him roughed in and base coated. And that way you'll be able to see him better too. And you know, frog feet are like wiggly. <laughs> Their toes are very um, all over the place. So you don't have to be perfect with this. I am kind of glad that I didn't get rid of all of my pencil lines. You can see through a little bit. All right. I'm so glad you guys are here and having fun chatting. If there's any questions, please put them all in caps so I'll see them when I look up. Now, this is where we're going to be getting some of that opaqueness to our benefit here. We're going to be picking up some of that white. My palette keeps sliding around. That's one of the things with the glass palette is that it doesn't go sliding. And my glass palette is so I do have a glass palette but you can't really see all the paint on it because it slides over to the side a lot more this is a tempered glass cutting board that I got on Amazon for like five bucks tempered glass being the kind of glass that is not going to shatter into shards it's specifically made as a cutting board, so anything I do as a painter is not going to be rougher than a knife chopping vegetables on it. All right. But see how the, the we've got that lighter color going around the eyeball now. All right. <laughs> oh, actually, he's starting to look pretty good already. Give him his little squishy toes. Those little squishy pads on the on the tips of his tips of his fingers. So that's looking pretty good already. Yeah, just paint it gray. That's not the part that my tabletop is white, so the colors show up just fine on the glass palette. It's that it goes sliding off to the side and you, you can't see it um, on my screen because it's really big. You've been painting all day, and what are you doing? You're watching me paint. Thank you so much. You know, the nice thing about these types of videos is that if you are painting, you can just turn on these kind of videos as like company in the studio. <laughs> there we go. So you see, I wasn't worried about using the same color. This just gets us a base coat to go with. And I actually think I will take this as my base to get that edge. on the the flower. This is where that brighter yellow is going to go. All right. But you see how that light color just went right over that dark color. It is beautiful here and I did go outside for a little bit of a walk around my my neighborhood safely, you know. 
you can't stay inside all day long. And it's, it's really, it's very fortunate to, um, to be someplace where you can get outside. Yeah, Chrissy, I saw in the UK, they've actually opened up all of the National Trust locations for outdoor. Um, you can go and you can walk and visit the grounds of places that you would usually have to pay for in the UK. Get that pinned down again. I want to make that a little bit darker underneath, but different from the from the background. And I want to deepen up the deepen up the darkness here. I'm just using a little bit of violet on top of that orangey red. And we're just going to draw through with the tip of the brush and just keep building up Yeah, so long as you're maintaining social distance, um, getting out is okay. Uh, we have shopping times now set up at a couple of our, our grocery stores, markets, that are setting it up for the elderly to be able to come in and shop without having to worry about um, everybody else being in there. There's a lot of elderly that are worried Rightly so. Then there's a lot of elderly that aren't worried about anything and think that they're bulletproof. And I have one of those in my life <laughs> also. So I'm just going in and darkening up that background bit right there. Yep, just put on some extra layers, go outside, breathe, 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 breathe that fresh air. Breathing deep into your belly. So, you know, so many people just breathe the top half of their lungs and breathing into your belly all the way down really helps because it keeps your lungs stronger. Get a little bit of water. because it builds your lung capacity and it helps if you do get some time. Yes, there are, there are some uh, youngsters that think the same, that they're impervious to this. And it's scary because many of the younger people, they may not show symptoms, but they're still carrying it. And I'm just taking some yellow over that lighter stripe that we did. And then I'm going to sort of soften it down into the red just a smidge. I keep looking up to make sure that my microphone is still working because that's one thing I can't actually hear my microphone. All right. But this little painting is actually coming in nice and quickly. So look at that. And we'll be able to brighten that up again. Babies breathe all the way into their bellies. That is so true. I, I had that exact conversation with my husband as I set my hands on his tummy and said, push my hands out when you breathe so that he would realize that's what I meant by breathing deep into your belly. Let's go ahead and get some of these other colors going on to the frog. I am going to go ahead and get this lime green, I think. And there's a little bit of sap green in this also, and I think I want that. And even though it looks like I'm getting this all messy, I could take a paper towel and wipe that off. It'll wipe out the loose paint that's sitting here and any wet paint on top of my little dried blob of, and it will, um, 
just clean right off. So let's let's get let's get this dude going in. More more frogginess. So we're just going to get that. Excellent. Thank you so much, Peggy. I'm glad that you let me know that you're you're hearing it okay now. I am going to be switching into a different paintbrush, I, I think, here, because this is, this one is a number 12 round. It's way big. What I want is my number four. And do I have that floating right here? No. So it looks like I'm going to go for a number two. This happens to be a silver ruby satin, and it works just fine for gouache also. It's not going to hold as much paint, so I will be dipping in, but there's some areas here that I want to get. Ah, excellent, Angela. So I have more videos for those of you guys coming in while this is drying a little bit. This video is the Hummingbird Hawk Moth. So Chrissy, after our conversation a couple of videos ago, I went and looked up hummingbird moths. So this is a hummingbird hawk moth. It's going up tomorrow. And this wood duck is going up on Monday. And these are going to be premieres. So we'll be able to chat. And I won't have the stress of having to do the live. Oh, and I did another hummingbird hawk moth that I still have to edit. Look at that. This was done with the acrylic gouache, the Turner Acryl gouache. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited by these things. You know, getting so many fun videos done, getting to talk and chat with you guys. All right, so let's see here. We've got a little bit darker green up here. And down here on his arm. Yep, just keep on the lookout. I'm, I'm going to be dropping videos pretty much every day. I, or doing a live stream. Let's see. I don't want to go too much into his fingers with that green. And remember, I'm going to be able to blend and get shadows and highlights. And as you're working through here, you're going to want your colors to start being a little bit thicker, a little bit more opaque, not so, um, you know, not, not quite so washy like we did with our base layers, just getting the, the colors in. I can go in and strengthen up around his eyeballs with a little more red and a smaller brush in a minute. But we're just, we're just working him in. An orchid mantis. Ooh, I'll have to look that up. I'm really enjoying when people give me suggestions like this. So an orchid mantis. I need to put that on my on my list, my little call list that I'm doing. Since I'm doing so many videos, <laughs> this is you know I'm I'm really I'm really trying to help folks out and give a lot of options so that people can. Oh look at that! He's getting in there. Um, before I do the final pass on the frog, I'm going to want to deepen up some of this background with a thicker coat of some paint. The hummingbird hawk moth. Oh, neat. Yeah, they're, I mean, the hummingbird moths, they're just spectacular. And some of them are actually, I mean, colored like a hawk, like a hummingbird. All right, a little bit darker green under here. This is all inside of the area where 
where he is so I don't have to worry about that out there in the background area. There it is, the words, background area. Oh, gosh. Are you guys all, you know, holding up under all this and finding time to do other creative things? I know Chrissy's out there doing creative stuff. She's got an awesome YouTube channel. And I say, let's support each other as much as we can. And being able to do these live shows and such, it is a safe way to socially be active with each other and also be safe. And I like that. All right. I think I want to let him dry a little bit. I will be taking some purpley yellow, so kind of grayed down, in here under his chin. I will be putting some brighter yellowy colors on his toes and orangey colors on his toes. But right now, I want to get more of this dark. Hey there, Heather. Nice to see you. Oh, wait, I forgot. She's a an awesome librarian who does work with all kinds of folks at her library and right now with her library being closed she's doing live streams for an art club i think that's amazing i'm just picking up some of that violet and i'm mixing it with that orange and getting that deep brown i'm sorry that's right behind my head again so let's Start getting this laid in a little bit more, with a little bit more contrast. See, there we go. And make more of that brown. Remember, that's the orange and the violet. Make that amazing, almost burnt sienna brown. Oh, yeah. The, the, the water coming clean in a lot of areas because they don't have all of the boats and such. It's going to be amazing for the wildlife. There we go. We're just, I still want to have some texture going in the background here. So I'm trying to go back in and make sure that I'm getting my strokes kind of going in a, whoa, I have my keyboard on my lap. <laughs> getting the strokes kind of going the right direction so that it feels like there's stuff in the background. Yeah, that, um, Heather, that color is the Arteza orange and the Arteza violet together. And nothing else. That's all it is. Violet and orange. And it makes varying tones of basically burnt sienna. And since the Arteza gouache doesn't have a burnt sienna, hmm, we have one. I want to make that darker. Look at that. And I don't mind if I see some of the brush strokes. As long as I keep the brush strokes kind of going the direction that I want my back, the growth in the back to be going. And I'm trying to get it in underneath, behind the flower, not in front of it. There we go. Yeah, burnt sienna is a weird color not to have, but you know, we can make it. So I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. I can, 
I can make that color. I can do it. All right. So I want that a little bit darker again. See? Just go in, build up your colors. Neat thing here, we can. And you can also go back and lightly blend out your brush strokes. All right, so now, as I'm looking at it and going, hmm, I'll just keep blending my brush strokes. But I want him to have that really dark color behind him also. So lots of the purple into that. If you add more orange, it will lighten up. And I'm using that half inch uh, snap by Princeton. But I want him to kind of have that really nice dark color behind him. There we go. You see how I did that? I just lined it up along the edge and just worked my way across. See how nice and sharp that is? Right around his edge. Makes him feel like he's in front of it. So this dark actually comes back to about here. So I'm going to go and make sure I get a, get a good amount of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, make the burnt sienna. Use those colors. Just, I might have got that a little bit too watery, so I'm just going to go and grab some more of the thicker paint because I'm going to be using this quite a bit. Let's see if we can, oh yeah, get that right in there and using the edge of that brush to do my cleanup, basically. I want it to come in and then out around him. Now, if you go over an area that is already wet, you can end up taking some of it out. Just let it dry and you can go back. I'm going to be getting some green up over here but I just wanted to go ahead and get a little bit of that brown already in here. Because now, this brown is right here. I can just take my wet brush and I can work that color around. Say I wanted more light back here behind him. I can just work some of that brown off. Push it around. It's not going to all come off. See, I'm just looking here going, yeah, there's actually kind of a darker stripe down here. That paint is on my brush. I can just move it. See, look at that. Oh my goodness gracious. See? Oh, don't be afraid of mixing up the making a mess or anything like that, guys. Just get the color down on the paper. I mean, look at this. Okay, I'm just going to grab straight violet because I want to make that darker right down here in the corner. Just grab it. Go. The gouache is forgiving. So many people are afraid of gouache and it's because they, they think that it's, you know, professionals use gouache. Well, yeah. So before they had the um, Photoshop, yeah, professionals use gouache. So what? 
we can use gouache too. We don't have to be, you know, a professional designer to use it. You can get so many different effects with it. You can make things look like watercolor paintings. You can make them look like acrylic paintings. There. And if things don't turn out, you can come back and paint over it. <laughs> oh, and if you hate messing up your paint pans, you know what? The neat thing here is that if I got, you know, I've got some of that darker green here in my, in my light. I can clean it up. Look at that. My, my lime green is all cleaned up now. That's all it takes. If it's already dry, you can use it. You can just wash it up. And you might lose a little tiny bit of the paint, but not enough to worry about. Let's see. Yeah. That brush has too much water in it. <laughs> yeah. I, me and oil paint. Ooh. It's something I would love to play with oils, but I'm hesitant to start doing it more. So this is the lime green. Start getting some highlights in here. Just really get that paint wet. If you don't want, you know, if you don't want mud, you just really and truly play with your colors on something you don't care about and start working on laying your colors down and seeing, okay, what happens if I put a light color down over a dark color? What happens if I take complementary colors and lay them over each other? So I put a light color right here so that it would start popping forward. I'm going to take a little bit of that brown tone with some of the green. Look at that. That's going to be my shadow underneath of his chin. Use the colors when you start out. Whatever colors you start out with, keep using those. And I'm letting it mix with the color that's down there. So that green that's already there, I'm blending into. Just makes a deeper shadow in a spot. The same right here. Yes, play. Enjoy the process. So my lighting is just enough weird so that you can't see very well. And the shadow under here is very dark. Very, very kind of creamy dark. I keep, I keep going back and forth which, which, uh, to see which screen I can see the best detail here. Shadow. We've got shadow around those toes. I really was trying to do this so that I wouldn't get too fussy. <laughs> we all see how that worked out, eh? But, you know, we're just having fun in the studio. You don't have to... You don't have to be anywhere. So let's just... Let's just have fun. I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow right there. Blocking in, you know, again, you can start, you can start getting more and more detail. He's actually starting to come in. I'm going to use that same shadowy brown color, I think. 
in some of these these areas so that it would be like I was using it to do um, almost like doing pen and ink. You can get in there and start detailing and then you can go over some of those details to give you more more of an area to do the work. All right. But look at that. He's coming in. He's starting to get shadow. He's starting to get a little bit more presence. You can get so much depth. Dark colors will dry lighter. So be aware you may have to go back in and punch up your contrast. And it's one of those things you don't even really realize until you've played with it. All right. He's looking good. Now, I think I want to go in with the purple. And this is this is the violet color. And I am going to, because he has this sort of blue and violet on his, on his legs. So I'm just going to mix up a little, whoops, okay, stick my finger in the paint. <laughs> I'm mixing up violet and ultramarine blue and getting this beautiful blue-violet color. Okay, so somebody just said something about a Bob Ross class. What do you guys think? Should I try doing a Bob Ross with the gouache? I think it would actually be quite successful. All right, so that's the dark shadowy bit right there. And up here on his arm. He's got a bit of a dark shadowy bit. And kind of right along his arm here. I'm going to give him a bit of a shadowy bit. <laughs> Bob, Bob Ross with gouache. I think that, that would be a lot of fun. What is your favorite Bob Ross painting that you would like to see me try doing in gouache? All right, I'm going to take some more of that red and the orange, make that really a bit more orange. The red is very, very, very strong. And now I am going to <laughs> Bob Ross and gouache. I, I, that just is kind of very alliterative. I like that. Very, very nice, uh, very nice sound to it. So I'm using the smaller brush and I'm tightening up that eyeball. I'm not putting any of the highlights in yet. And then this one, let's tighten up that eyeball. Just clean up those edges. And go, yep, yeah, that one really sticks out farther. So it needs to be bigger and stick out farther. And there'll be a bit of a highlight on that. Let's see, maybe a little bit of this yellow. Ah, see, with gouache, you don't have to depend on wet into wet. You can get it wet again. Something that I'm really, really enjoying about the gouache is that you can 
just get it wet again just like working from wet pan <laughs> well you know sometimes if you can't find somebody to be in your studio with you 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 do things like that you talk to the you you talk to the paintbrush you talk to the there we go. I just added a little touch of white to my orange, red color, just to brighten that up so you can see it as separate from the background. There we go. And then this one actually sticks out farther also. See, so I'm going, hmm, okay, I need to make his eyeballs bigger. And that's the fun thing here is that you can, you can say, oh yeah, his eyeballs need to be bigger. They need to stick out beyond the edge of his face. That one's a lot bigger though. I think I'm going to make this one bigger over here. Just like that. It paints right over the top of that light green with that red, just like doing gouache. I mean, just like, just like doing gouache. <laughs> we are doing gouache. Just, night, oh, night, night, Chrissy. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. Have a good sleep. I'm going to take some of that white that's got a bit of orange on it. See, I, I just... I mess up my palette all over the place and that's okay because I know I can clean it up. We're going to put some of this on and then I'm going to blend it in because it doesn't really look like that. But I wanted that ever so slight edge around the outside. So to get that, just put a plop on and then work it around. See, look at that. And if you don't like the texture that's sort of starting to show up because you've got too much paint, just get it wet and smooth it out. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, so I want to gray that gray down this purple a little bit. What I think I'm going to do, I just took that that blue violet color right over here to this yellowy orange color. And now I'm getting this gray. Now, people are like, "Oh, you mix the complementary colors and all you're going to do is get mud. Well, no, all you're going to do is desaturate the color. You see how this, this purple was really dark and by adding, you know, well, yes, there's white in this also here, but by adding your complementary color, it's going to give you a desaturated or grayed out version. Because what I want to do here is sort of gray out a little bit of those darker bits. And make them a little more natural. There we go. So, there we go. All right. Okay, so the eyeball is pretty much dry. I think I want to take some of this yellow white color that's on my palette, this yellowy white, orangey yellowy white color. And I'm going to go in here and give a bit of a highlight, but I'm going to mix it a little bit with the red that's there. 
and get a dull highlight. I don't want this one to be my brightest highlight yet. I'm allowing it to pull some of that color from underneath. And then we're going to put a bit of that underneath here and a little bit more on the outside edge. I haven't put his pupil in yet. That's just going to make this totally change. But I do want to clean up the outside edge of that eyeball just a little. And then I want to take, I'm just going to use the violet as my black. I didn't put any black out on my palette. So he's going to get a little violet for his pupil. And these guys have these slits. It's a real fine slit that follows the shape. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Widen that out just a little bit in the middle. He's planning something. He's looking both ways before he before he leaps is what he's doing. All right. So I'm going to grab some of this yellowy orange color that's down here, but I want to take it over onto the white and I'm going to give him some, actually it needs to be more yellowy orange. There we go. Onto his fingers. Just a bit, leaving some of that lighter color that's underneath. and out here on his toe. There's going to be some highlights put on here. He is, he is a froggy. He does have sort of that damp skin type of feel. I'm just, I keep looking at different, different views that I have here. I'm going to put some of that right up here under his lip or mouth. He's got a, that deeper tone shadow. I'm going to use some of this orange down here and then blend it out some. Yes, he's planning to jump. I think he sees the cat coming. Some big kitty is coming through. Kitty cats like to chase frogs. They don't really like to eat them. They do like to chase them. There we go. Okay, so now we're starting to get some of those, those details in there. He's almost as cute as a kitty. You betcha. I want to gray out some of that green. and move it around. We're leaving some shadows, we're leaving some highlights, but he needs, he needs kind of a unifying color. There, see, we're getting his arm put in here. Basically I'm like carving him into the paint. <laughs> All right. So after you've got your paint on, maybe you wanted to make a highlight 
and you already had that lighter color underneath, I just took this white or took the wet brush and wiggled the brush to get the highlight. And then maybe I want a bit more of this white. Start getting it softening up a little bit. And because this white right now is way too wet, dab it off. It's going to give me dull highlights right now because it's so thin. but I want to start working out, okay, where's his leg? It's up here. It's sort of coming in front of that other, actually it comes right up to the edge. And there's a darkness underneath. So now is, now is when I'm going, all right, where is the highlight? Where is the darkest tone? And you just start working those things in but you see how he's starting to come together. All right, take some of that brown because I need to deepen up that area here. And we're just carving him in. What do you think? We getting him? You coming together? I think he's coming together. I think he's definitely got something going on here. I think I need to take a little bit of that red and a little bit of that brown. because right around his eyeball, there's a darker shadow where his eyeball sort of sets back inside the skin of the, of his head. Now that one looks like it's attached and not just sitting on top of him. But you don't put this all the way around the whole eye by putting it just on the areas where the skin is, it looks like it's going back inside. Yeah. Yep, it's practice. Practicing um, making small movements, knowing how thick your paint is. Also, see, look at this. I got paint all over me too. Guess it's time to wash the paint off my hand. Don't know. Don't know where I got that one from. Let's see. Maybe it's on my paintbrush. Let's see, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and get my little sparkles down here while I'm along that edge. Along there. Just, just in a few places. And I'm barely letting the brush touch. And that's another thing. Don't press really hard when you're trying to flow a line out. So I'm gonna grab some of that brown on this brush because I see that there's like a couple little spots where there's a bit of brown.
give it a little bit of that natural look to it. There we go. Part of the um, being able to draw tiny details with a fairly steady hand is that I did do a lot of pen and ink, a lot of pen and ink as a youngster. That was my main, my main love. I would do things like 16 by 20s and 24 by 36s. <laughs> you know, and maybe that's too bright up there. I think that's a little too bright. I'm just going to blend it out just a little bit with water. Now we just have that glow. Yeah, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. So let's see here. We've got a bit of a white highlight up around his eye here. These are going to get blended in. I'm just dropping some white on so that I have it to, to work with. Here, there's some white on his finger there. Some of these on his fingers I may leave without doing anything to them. See, there's a little bit of one here. I'm just, just looking, just saying, okay, where's the, where's the highlights hitting? There's one right there. There's a little bit of highlight here. Now his fingers are not totally resolved and they're not going to be. I'm not making this, if you wanted it to be a, a photorealistic image, you've got the photograph on top of his knee, coming down this one. By putting these highlights on, it lifts them up, makes him look more three-dimensional. It also makes the shadows feel more like there's a reason for them. Right here, there's a bit of a shadow coming around there. There's a little bit of some shadow or highlight down here. Not a ton. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it, Lean. Have sweet dreams. Stay safe. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just get that a little bit wet around the edge edges of it, pull it down. That's all it takes. Just little touches. We're doing micro touches now. We are not, we're not doing any more big, huge swatches of color. We're doing little shades, little Micro adjustments. That's what I'm trying to get at. We're trying to do micro adjustments right now. So back of his foot here. Start pulling in a little more detail. There we go. A little more detail. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. He's he's coming out really cute. Let's see, a little bit of that green into that ultramarine blue and violet mix. Look how nice and earthy that became. So that will give us kind of that green to put in for shadow on his arm there. And 
the green to put in on the shadow up here on the side of his face. Because his face got a little bit short on this edge, I just want to bring it out just a little bit. And we'll be able to work that in because there's actually a bit of a highlight back there also. See, you can work those things in, you can keep adjusting, you can keep going and say, ooh, maybe, what will happen if? I, I like the, what will happen if I try this? Well, I'll tell you that your painting will never explode if you try putting paint on it. <laughs> so just have fun. Put the paint on it, enjoy it. And if it doesn't turn out the way you are expecting it to, try it again. So look at that, that little tiny bit of a line. Now we've got that reflection going on back there behind. And I can work that shadow in and around his eye. Just looking here going, okay, so where are we? Where are we? We are at the, oh my goodness, we are getting so close to being done. I could just keep playing and adding more. I could, I could just keep playing and adding more see that corner actually has a bit of a highlight on it. Boom, right there. The edge of his eye right along here has more of a highlight. So I'm just going to take some of that paint and go like this. Tiny bit up here on the outside of that eyeball. Tiny bit out here. Just, you know, if it doesn't work, you can always add a little bit more or take it away, rub it out. There we go. I'm <laughs> He's looking so cute if I do say so myself. So let's see. I'm looking at this going, you know, there's a little bit of that purple that I think I'm going to just brush some detail in. Just like that. You pull down with your color. And I can take some color out by doing this because I'm not actually adding color to it right here. I'm just using a damp brush to pull some color out. Maybe a little tiny bit more right here. Needs a little bit more dark. Down here at the point where it's coming behind the flower. And then working its way up and around. And he's got a bit more of a patch of color up here on his upper arm. I keep looking, what am I missing? Oh, there's, there's a bit of his, the toe that's up here that you really don't, you don't see it very much, but it's like his thumb. 
it's up there. So what I need is a bit of orange. And I'm just getting it wet. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this. Thank you. For those of you who are still here, I thank you for hanging out and making this such an enjoyable event. These kinds of events we can do. We don't have to worry about getting anybody sick. We can just have fun and enjoy each other's company. Oh, he is sweet. Give him a little bit more of a shadowy bit here underneath of his chin with that orange. There's a little bit of a line. Let's grab some purple. A little bit of a line under here. Yeah. Thank you, Gina, for saying that he's looking good. I appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to zoom out, move that out of the way, rinse my brush. Oh, I need to sign it. Because, you know, sometimes you just have to know when it's time to, to say enough is enough. And I think enough is enough. Hey, Joanne. All right, I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to turn off this picture. And let's see here. Let's have to find an edge so that I can make him a little bit smaller so we can see him better. So we're going to pull that tape off. Thank you, Lisa. He does seem to be a bit of a frog prince, doesn't he? Pull that tape off, pull that tape off. There we go. What do you guys think? We did it. Did we accomplish frogginess? I want you to remember that there is the traceable over on my website. Let's see here. I will drop it into the chat also. and paste. The traceable is on the website. And if you are new here and you haven't done it yet, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on all of your notifications so that you will be notified when new videos go up because I've got new videos going up pretty much every day. There might be a day where I'll skip a day, but Pretty much every day I'm going to try and get a video up for you to have play in the background. Just go turn on one of my playlists and play it in the background. I'll be there visiting with you, chatting along as I make art. Remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I hope to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>